Now to actually make this lid kind of fly out of here like this when the user clicks on the start, uh, we're gonna have to create an animation. So one thing to be aware of under window animation, we have these two panels. Animations where the actual keyframes would be, where you tell it at this point be at point A and 30 frames later be at point B, that kind of thing. And the animator is to connect different animations together. So I have both of those windows open. Uh, one's up here, which I haven't built anything yet. And then the one down here is the actual keyframe part. So if I click on the object I wanna animate, I can just hit create right there. And I'm gonna call this lid fly. And we're gonna put it right there inside of the animations folder. And it created an animator too to control this animation. Um, and all we're gonna be doing is moving its uh, transform position. So if I just do transform and then plus on the position, now at zero frames it's there and at 60 frames or you know one second it's here. Well, let's say at 20 frames I want it to go up a little bit. And I found the easiest way to do that is to just turn on the recording. So it'll basically, I just place the timeline, playhead, and then I move the thing. So we move it up and there it made a keyframe for us. And we'll say this many frames later. I'm gonna copy this and paste. So from there, uh, I'm actually gonna move this this way and delete the last keyframe so it's not jumping around. So it'll go from here to there. And then a little bit later, it'll go from there. And then from here, we'll say it'll be roughly there. And then here it'll be, you know, kind of sitting on the ground over here. So right now it looks like that. Doot, doot, doot. And I'm going to make this not take so long. It's not going to hang out so long up in the air. So it's just going to go up, over, down. So the biggest length is the time of it moving from up, over, and then back down. So there's my entire animation. And... I'm going to save that and now so it added this animator to it and the controller is this lid only if I double click on that it'll take me here and as soon as I call this animation it's going to go run this the lid fly which is where it flies off to the side there so our start menu needs to simply run that animation so we go into our interface canvas Here's my start button. Um, there's the actual button. That's just an empty container there. So this start here, let's get rid of these old ones. And so on click, when we click the start button, we want it to do something. Well, the thing that's doing something, the animator is actually on this object here. So I'm gonna drag that in there and we wanna run a function on the animator and we're going to play and then what animation are we gonna play? The one called lid fly, and that's case sensitive. So we're just typing in the name of that right there. And a couple other little gotchas that you wanna be aware of. If I hit play right now, it's just gonna start running this lid fly immediately. So I'm going to right click and create an empty, and then right click that and set as default. So when the game starts, it's going to go to this empty thing and not animate anything. The only way to get to this is going to be when we click on the start button, it'll play that. One other thing to be aware of is in this lid fly, you want to turn off loop time or else it'll keep restarting the animation and just running it over and over again. So here we are in VR, click on the start and our animation plays just like we wanted. Now for part two, we want the user to be able to grab the speed plate here. That's just an empty parent, the actual speed plate's right here. And it already has an XR grab interactable, which is great. And it's got a box collider and it's using gravity. So we want to be able to put it into a socket that is basically going to be part of this ring. If I turn that on and off, you can see that's the little metal part. And I want this to end up there. So we're going to make a socket right here and i'm just going to make an empty here and call this socket and then i want to say exactly where i want it to attach so i'm going to create another empty on that and call this oops attach and that's going to be my attach point 
And so here's my socket that I need it to have a socket interactor. And I need it to have a sphere collider. And that way I can set it to trigger. And that actually looks pretty good for the size. And it will attach wherever I tell it to attach when I drag this in here. So I can move this little attach point around, rotate it, etc., to determine where that end point is without moving the actual socket. And then for the hover mesh material, it's good to give the user feedback. Um, in the materials here, I went ahead and made a green translucent. You could create your own material if you want. Um, but there's my hover mesh material. And let's give it a try in VR and see what happens. So I can grab that and I'm using the thumbstick to kind of push it around. And you can see when I hover here and drop it, it's a little off. But rather than go back and forth, making tiny adjustments and then hitting play again, um, I know it's jumping to the attach point. So if I move the attach point, I'm still in play mode. So whatever changes I make here are going to be erased or removed, right? Reverted. So I'm basically going to position this where I want it here. And that looks pretty good. And this is very important. I'm going to copy that world position because as soon as I go out of this, these numbers are going to go back. So if I stop it, all those numbers went back, but now I can just go in and paste the world position and now the socket's right where I want it. So if we play again, grab the speed plate and there it is. Jumps right into place where we want it. And when we drop it in there, we want to trigger question one to activate. So in order to enable question one, which is currently disabled in the socket, if we expand the interactor events here, there's one called select. That basically means when you drop an item into that socket, we want something to happen. So we'll hit the plus and we don't need to code anything. We can just go right into what we want to activate. So in the interface here, I have question one. I'm going to drop that right in there. And any game object you use has this menu game object. And we're going to do the set active bool, which is a boolean and on off. And if this is not checked, it's false. And if I check it, it means when I drop something in here, make this object active. Uh, and actually a second thing, now that I think about it, we're going to need the start menu to go away. So I am going to add a, another action and drop the start menu in there. Game object, set active. And I actually want that to go off. So let's test that. When we drop it in there, it should activate. Okay. We drop this in here, start one off, and question one activated. Ta-da! Good luck.